Hi friends, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Jay and today I'm going to teach you how to make and then freeze homemade pizza dough. This video is another installment in my homemade with love video series. For ingredients, we have sugar, cream of tartar, yellow cornmeal, all-purpose flour, a packet of active dry yeast, olive oil, and salt. For supplies, I am using my stand mixer with my dough hook. I have a bowl to mix my dry ingredients in, and then a bowl that I will be uh, putting some olive oil in, and this is what I'm going to let the dough rise in. And then I have some cling wrap. And I have some pretzels, because it's lunchtime and I'm hungry and I'm trying to get this done. I get hangry, you guys. I get hangry. So your very first step is going to be to dissolve half a teaspoon of sugar into one cup of warm water. And I actually just go ahead and do that right in the bowl that I'm going to be mixing with. So just kind of get that nice and dissolved. I've also heard of people using honey instead of sugar, and I'm sure that that would be fine, but I just use the sugar because it's easy exactly how much to put in there. So the next thing that you're going to want to do is sprinkle your active dry yeast over your sugar water mixture. And then you're going to give that five to ten minutes to kind of wake up and activate. While that's sitting and doing its thing, you can go ahead and combine your dry ingredients. And I've got a bowl here for that. So for this, you're looking at two and one-fourth cups of all-purpose flour. I've read that you can also use bread flour. I have never done that. I always have all-purpose on hand. So that's usually what I use. But I've read that bread flour works fine. I love the yellow cornmeal in my pizza dough recipe because to me, it just is another step that brings me closer to having true pizza dough like what you'd get from a restaurant because all the pizza dough that I ever remember has the um, cornmeal and you can feel it on the bottom and I, I don't know I just love it so my recipe definitely uses it and then some salt and eight a teaspoon of cream of tartar just a little bit that. You're looking for the top of your water yeast sugar mixture to be foamy and mine's not yet. So we're going to give it a few more minutes. If it doesn't foam at all, that means your yeast is dead. It's dead. Bury it in the backyard. You can't use it. So this is the first time this has ever happened to me and of course it's going to be while I'm filming a YouTube video, but I've waited 15 minutes and I actually don't like how my yeast mixture looks. I've never seen it look like that before. <laughs> that looks weird. So I'm gonna throw it out and try again. Okay, that's what it's supposed to look like. That's really foamy. I don't know what the other one was doing, but that looks right. Okay, I don't know what was going on there, but we've got it all worked out now. So, now that this is all foamy and ready to go, I've got my dry ingredients combined. I'm gonna go ahead and put my dry ingredients in here. And then you want to add two tablespoons of olive oil to that. It's nice out today and Benny's out there having the best day of his life. It's so fun to watch him through the kitchen window. And you want to combine it for like three to five minutes or until a soft dough forms. And actually it's really obvious when it's done because it'll kind of create a ball and it'll stick to the hook. And that's how you know. All right, and you see how it's one lump of dough? Kind of rolling around in there that's how you know oh yeah this is definitely sticky sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't i find that when i make pizza dough no two times have ever been exactly the same this one's pretty sticky i've had it come out perfect consistency before that's okay if yours is sticky it's okay that mine is you're just going to put down a little bit of flour and a clean surface Feel free to put down as much flour as you need for this to not be sticky anymore. Even just that little sprinkle, it already feels much better. 
much less sticky. And you're basically just gonna form it into a nice ball. I kind of tuck it under. And then put a little olive oil in your bowl. Kind of spread that around. Put your ball in there roll it around make sure it gets really nice and coated in the olive oil and then you want to cover it with your clean wrap I just bought this and let it hang out on your counter I don't know 30 minutes just to let it rise you'll know you'll come out and you'll see it and you'll be like oh yeah that's risen so while that's hanging out I'm gonna clean up and I'll see you back here in about 30 minutes Okay, it has been 30 minutes and our dough has risen. This is what we've got going on here. So now let's move on. Almost done. I ended up buying one of these because I saw Joanna Gaines using it and I'm so glad I did. I love this little tool. Okay, let's put down a little bit more flour here. And what I'm gonna do, and this is where it kind of gets unique to what your plan is here. This can, is enough dough for two pizzas with the size cast iron skillet I like to use. So I'm going to cut this in half. And then what I'm going to do, get it kind of in a ball here, and then I'm gonna do the book method of folding. Fold it over, turn it. Fold it over, turn it do that a few times here and what that's going to do is help create those bubbles in the crust that you find at like you know pizza shop quality pizza crust all right I think that that looks pretty good I'm gonna roll it into a ball and set it aside here for a moment and I'm gonna do the same with this one it's very wet okay fold it like a book Fold it like a book. Just like that. Okay, get it into a nice ball. All right, now we've got, there are two different ways that you can store this in the freezer. You can store it in a Ziploc bag or you could store it in a, um, like, a like a plastic container, one of these. Tupperware container, that's what I'm trying to say. I like to do Tupperware, although I have done the Ziploc bag. I have a Ziploc bag right now in my freezer. I like this better. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in each of these. That was probably too much. And just spread it around. And these are just Betty Crocker Tupperware containers. I got from the Dollar Tree for $1.25, and they're going to work beautifully for what we're doing here. Okay. Okay, now here's the deal. There's a couple of things I want to talk to you about with this freezing pizza dough, and not all of this information comes from me organically. Uh, you know, a lot of homesteading skills you learn from other people and other resources over time, and I can't always remember where I learned these things from, but in this case, I can. So we've made our pizza dough. The first thing that I'm going to do in an effort to freeze the pizza dough is now that I've got these in their oiled containers, I'm gonna put these in the fridge overnight. And that is a process called cold fermentation. Now I learned about this off of a website called natashaskitchen.com and I'll put that in the description down below. I take no credit for this and I actually wrote this information down so that I could give it to you. So cold fermentation is when yeast is given time to weaken gluten forming proteins, which makes the dough easier to stretch and shape and creates a soft crust with air pockets that bubble in the oven. And that was paraphrased directly from her website again in the description. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to take this out of the fridge and that's why I like the Tupperware way of doing things because I don't have to now transfer this into something else. This is already in the container I'm gonna freeze it in. So tomorrow morning, I'm gonna take this out of the fridge and put it right in the freezer. It's ready to freeze. When you want to use it, 
the night before, take it out of the freezer and put it into the fridge. This is called cold defrosting. And then an hour before you're going to use it, take it out of the fridge and let it rest on the counter. The more time you give this dough to do the sciencey stuff that it wants to do with the gluten and the weakening and the bubble creation and all that sciencey stuff, the better your crust is going to turn out. I realize that there are a couple extra steps in here that you don't need to do because you could really just put this thing in the freezer right now. You don't have to do the cold fermentation. You don't have to do the cold defrosting, but you're giving your dough just more time, more opportunity to do what really good pizza dough does. And you're gonna end up with a product that's tastier and, and feels better and feels more like what you would get at a grocery store or a, a pizza shop. And for me, that's kind of the point. Like, I, I feel like people don't enjoy this kind of stuff as much if it's drastically different than what you'd expect. My husband, for example, um, if I give him something that I've made homemade, but he kind of is expecting something else, he doesn't enjoy it as much because his brain is like, this is wrong. So by taking these extra steps, you're coming that much closer to true pizza shop pizza crust. And in my mind, it's worth it. I know I went over kind of a lot with you here today, so I will put instructions down in the description so that you can follow a written version of this as well as the ingredients that I used. I, I hope that I didn't make it seem more complex than it is, but I hope that you understand that this process is actually incredibly easy. And it does, I guess, theoretically take a little bit of time because you need 10 minutes for the yeast to foam, you need 30 minutes for the dough to rise, you have to put this overnight, you have to leave it on the counter for an hour when you're ready to use it. So there is time involved, but it's, it's time that you can be doing other things without even having to think about it. So hopefully those are sacrifices you're willing to make to have this delicious homemade pizza dough that does not contain any of the preservatives or chemicals that you will find in store-bought pizza dough that has a, a longer shelf life because of the preservatives. In my mind, three months is still a really long time to have to be able to use this up. So not much of a sacrifice there. So I hope that you enjoyed this recipe. On Sunday, I will be uploading a cast iron pizza recipe. And when I filmed that, because it's already done and filmed and edited, I chose not to go over the pizza dough recipe. I just felt like that was going to make the video very long. So I said, okay, well, you know, if you have a pizza dough recipe or if you just want to buy it from the store. And then I thought to myself, no, that's a cop out. I'm copping out. <laughs> so I wanted to take the time to make this. When you watch my video on Sunday, you, I'm going to say, oh, well, I'm not going to go over it. But then I did decide afterwards to make this and I'm giving this to you before I give you that. So you're armed with all the tools that you need to make a delicious from scratch cast iron pizza. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments if I missed anything. If you're confused about anything, please reach out to me either in the comments or you can DM me on my Instagram. I'm very responsive there and I'm happy to talk to you about any questions you might have. As I start to get into these recipes that are a bit more complex, have a bit more steps, I'm still learning too how to film and how to edit and put them together in a clear, concise way. So if you have any um, constructive criticism or again, any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope that your pizza turns out so yummy this weekend. Have a blessed day. Bye.